Hi, welcome everyone. Appreciate you spending some time with us today. My name is Brett Peterson. I am the Director of Sales and Operations for North, Central, and South America. Today we've got Dr. David Wiseman on the line here with us. He's our lead technical support for Isograph. Um, he'll briefly be giving kind of a high-level overview of our Weibel analysis tool. And if you have any additional questions afterwards, please feel free to visit our website at isograph.com. You can download a free demo of our software or reach out to us directly and we'd be happy to help you as well. With that being said, let me turn the time over to David to share his screen and we will we'll dive straight in. I appreciate it. Thanks, David. No problem. Thanks, Brett. If you will bear with me for a moment, I will find the application to share. Okay. Um, so firstly, let me just check. Everybody can see uh, my application running. Yep, perfect. Lovely. Yeah, so thanks very much again, Brett. So yeah, my name's David Wiseman. I work in technical support and customer training for Isograph. And today I'd like to give you a short introduction to the viable analysis modules of Isograph's availability workbench and reliability workbench software tools. Now the actual introduction will be given in availability workbench. But as I will touch on later on, uh, very similar, almost identical tools are available in the reliability workbench suite as well. So firstly, uh, viable analysis. Uh, this is a method by which you can perform a statistical analysis of historical failure and maintenance data. And from that analysis, uh, gain information about the trend in failures that you're seeing in your assets. So for example, if you use the large population of valves over the years and you've recorded when each one was installed and when it failed or was replaced, that information can be imported to the software. You can do a line fit to that data and then work out you know, how long do you expect an average valve to last for? Is there any wear out taking place? So obviously this is all useful information on its own. But uh, the programs uh, will then allow you to share that information with other modules. So as we'll, as we'll see, for example, in Availability Workbench, the results of a, of a viable analysis can be shared with RCM cost. And with AvSim, Isograph's reliability-centered maintenance and availability simulation tools. And that information can form the basis for uh, simulating failures, for optimizing maintenance and estimating system availability. So I'm showing on my screen now uh, a fairly straightforward example of a viable analysis. Uh, so here I have a viable data set called Valve. It contains a list of uh, times to failure for a population of 50 valves. I've got that highlighted here and you can actually see the data points listed at the bottom in the table. So there you can see, you know, the first valve, it lasted for about 25,000 hours. Another may have lasted about 14,000 hours and so on. Now, this is one of the formats in which you can import the failure data. If instead of logging at times to failure, you've been logging install and failure dates, as I mentioned earlier, you can see on the right here, it is possible to import the data in that format instead. So either way is fine. The program can uh, accept either format of data. Now in my example, each one of these data points represents a failed valve. But of course, not all equipment, not all assets are removed from the system on failure. Some may be replaced as uh, part of a scheduled replacement regime. On the other hand, it might be that the, the valve, the, the, the asset is still in situ, still running, it's just it hasn't failed to date. Data points like that, uh, equipment that have been replaced part, as part of maintenance or that are still running now, can be marked as suspended. So the analysis is capable of dealing with what we call right censored data, data points that don't represent failure, but rather represent survivors. So each of those data points uh, is automatically plotted on this cumulative probability plot. Now this is showing uh, the time to failure on the x-axis, so that's just each one of these data points that we've got shown down here. 
And on the y-axis, the program has estimated the probability of failure by that point in time. So there are several methods that the program can use to do this calculation to estimate unreliability at each of those time points. Um, I won't go into great detail on that now. Um, if you have questions about this, of course, you can contact us and we can, of course, provide much more detailed information. Suffice it to say for now, the program has taken those data points, those times to failure, and automatically calculated a corresponding probability of failure for each one of those data points. So once the data points are on the plot, you can then choose a failure distribution with which to fit that data. Um, so we've got simple things like an exponential distribution. Basically, that will give you a simple, constant mean time to failure from your data points, or something more complex like a viable, if you think that there might be time dependence of the failure rate uh, of your asset. So if you think there might be wear out or infant mortality going on, then Again, you could use a viable type distribution. So once again, what we're doing here is choosing a, a trend line, choosing a distribution to fit the data and try and work out what the failure behavior is, what's the mean time to failure, is there any wear out, and so on. Now it is possible for the program to select a distribution automatically, but it is best only to use that when you're very confident in your data, when you have lots of data points and you're, and you're pretty sure that that data is all clean, there's no weird outliers or mixing of data or anything like that. So here you can see, we've already done a line fit to this data using a, a viable distribution. And on the right, the program has estimated the characteristic lifetime. So it's, it's estimating that you know, a valve is gonna last roughly 12,000 hours on average, let's say. And it's got a shape parameter of just over two which without going into detail, just indicates that there is wear out, that the failure rate of a valve increases over time. And that's what this information is telling us. Now there are other values here as well, things like uh, you know, the um, goodness of fit parameter, epsilon, and the correlation coefficient, rho, just measures of how well your trend line fits the data, uh, as well as other bits and pieces of information you can see at the bottom. Again, I'm keeping it at quite a high level, so I won't go into detail there today. For the moment, I'll focus on the failure data. So this is what the program expects for a valve based on the historical failure data that you've imported. So what can I now do with that information? Well, we said that we can share that with other modules, things like RCM cost and AVSIM. So I'm gonna go over to RCM cost and maybe show you how it works there. So I'll switch to RCM cost. And uh, I'm just going to very quickly maybe create a little uh, functional failure hierarchy consisting of a location, function, functional failure, and finally a cause. So uh, if you're familiar with RCM cost, you'll be familiar with the concept of a cause, but I'll just give you a quick intro. Basically the cause represents the cause of the functional failure. This is where most of the information goes into RCM cost, and it's these failure causes that you would simulate as you're optimizing your maintenance in RCM cost. Now, if you're going to optimize maintenance, you need to be able to simulate the failure, repair, and maintenance of a cause like this one. And of course, the raw data for simulating the failure is going to go on to the failure tab. Now, of course, there are different ways of getting the information in here. For example, you can manually enter mean times to failure or viable parameters. But in this case, what I'm going to do is select a viable set. Maybe my valve viable set, the one I was just looking at. When I select that from the drop down box, that will pull in the results of the line fit that we saw earlier. So the characteristic lifetime, 12,000 hours, the shape parameter of about two, a location parameter which was set to zero automatically. So now, when we start simulating this failure as part of our maintenance optimization, the trends that we see in the simulation 
should follow the same trend that we've been seeing in the real world. So we're optimizing our maintenance, we're basing it on a much more realistic picture of the failure behavior we've been observing from our actual valves in our real system. And so this is an example of how that will be going up, done in RCM cost. Exactly the same thing is possible in AVSIM when you're building failures for blocks in your reliability block diagram. So there you can do a more accurate availability analysis based on the real world failure behavior you've observed in your system. And also, as we said at the start, a very, very similar tool is available in Reliability Workbench. So there you can fit historical failure data and then link it to, say, a failure model for a fault tree. So if you're doing a, a fault tree analysis for reliability and safety purposes, again, you can base the failure data in your model on the failures you've been observing in the real world, just using that viable analysis module. So that's a very quick introduction uh, to the viable analysis tools in Availability Workbench and Reliability Workbench. Uh, so Brett, do you have any questions at all? No, I appreciate it. That was, that was spot on. And if they have any additional questions, uh, definitely reach out to us. We'd be happy to go in more, more in depth and get anything that you might, might need from Isograph, be able to help you out. Okay.